So, you know, tell us a little bit about the production of Skylanders Swap Force. So the production of Skylanders is obviously very complex. We have this whole new layer with the, the toys and the hardware and the portal of power. And so it's definitely not like creating just a standard video game. We have a lot more challenges because we're creating hardware that needs to obviously work in conjunction with the software in a very seamless way. And because of the combinatorial nature of having all of these different characters and with Swap Force having characters that in and of themselves have halves that you can swatch, uh, swap, top and bottom halves, there's just a lot of work that goes into the engines and the pipelines and the content creation that has to take into account, like in, our, in the case of Swap Force, characters that have models and textures and animations that need to seamlessly blend in over 250 different combinations. And so the team at Vicarious Visions has basically built this graphics engine from the ground up just for this game to be able to handle the you know sheer amount of characters, the the you know the type of actions and behaviors and you know visual quality uh, aspects that we need to deliver on. So it's definitely a big challenge, but it's it's been one we've been up for. You know, yeah, we've been because about it. because you said there's like uh, 256, right? Yeah, 256 uh, different unique combinations. Unique conversation, uh, con I say conversation combinations, and then on top of that, um, you would figure that. I mean, I guess I mean, if I'm doing my math right, there'll be like almost 500 different, you know, animations in itself, or 250 uh, different animations. animations. Because one of the things about the Skylanders is that they have these default animations. They have their base powers, you know, a secondary power, a primary power. They also have a, a special uh, power that they unlock pretty early. But each character also has an upgrade chain. So there's visual effects, there's animations, there's sound effects. There's a, there's a whole package, if you will, of assets that go along with each Skylander that goes beyond just the default characters and really ties into just all of these different upgrades. And, and in Swap Force, what's interesting is we have an upgrade chain for each half. So, you, yeah, you'll be able to upgrade each character, both the top half and the bottom half separately. And so we need to oh, take into consideration, yeah, like the animations and the powers and the sound effects for both, ha for both halves now. So it's, it's a lot of work and certainly a lot of creative challenges because we need to make sure they're varied and fresh and interesting and don't feel like, oh, I've already seen that character. I've already played him. You know, we really want them to seem varied, you know, so that each character you add to your collection is going to feel different and give you a different experience. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. I was just about to ask. I was about to ask, how does the leveling up work? Like, does it level up just the top half or the bottom half? So you level up both. That's good. That way you can always keep one. Exactly. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Wait, so wait a minute. If it does that, does that mean that if I switch it to a single target, like, would the top half of the, the original person be a lower level? So the way it works is that uh, the upgrade chains for each... Uh, have the top and bottom halves. Um, they do work a little bit differently. So for the bottom half, it's basically ability driven. So there's upgrades in terms of uh, in really enhancing the, the power, the ability that the bottom half has. And the same applies to the top half, but the core character data like experience, character level, you know, things like that is generally stored with the top half. We're, we're still figuring out some of the, yeah. the way it works, but uh, you know, like I said, they both have an upgrade chain, and there'll be certain things that'll probably be associated with just the, the top half, sort of the, the heart of the character, if you will, uh, which we're still figuring out. But you know, the, the nice thing is you will have something that's associated with being able to upgrade both halves. That was important to us. We wanted to feel like, uh, and really uh, make sure that kids felt like each piece was equal. And, and not secondary to one or the other. Now, as far as, um, you know, just to, you know, touch on the fans, I mean, you know, this all began with the legendary Spyro. So, you know, will Spyro, uh, as far as now or future, have more of a, uh, uh, like, you know, coming back into a presence or a change, uh, like Core Spyro or something like that? So Spyro's always going to be an important character in the brand, but at the same time, we're also very sensitive to making sure that one character doesn't really feel more special or is so overtly different than the other characters to make the others not feel special. You know, this is really a game that's driven by collectability and really personal preference, finding the set of characters that you like to play with, and not feeling like if you don't choose, let's say, Spyro or one of the other characters, that uh, it's a bad thing. And so we certainly tried to do our best to 
you know, honor the, the, the history of Spyro, and even Cinder for that matter, you know, who's one of the original characters that we had in Spyro's Adventure, and make sure that they were important, uh, but at the same time, really honor the new characters and make, make sure that there was at least a certain level of equality between them to really give players that feeling that, hey, I, you know, I like this character, I like that character, this is who I want to play with, and it's all about, like, that personal preference. And, and another thing, like, uh, it's funny, I was talking to one of your uh, other guys, you know, who worked on the game in the past, last Toy Fair, exactly. So I have to ask you the same question, because uh, I may, we may have suggested to them, you know, as far as, you know, adding another element, because, you know, we figured, you know, you might want to add something. Uh, so what, what about the concept of time and space? element. So time and space would be very interesting and we've actually had a lot of conversations about whether we not uh, That was me. <laughs> whether or not we add new elements. It's come up quite a bit, light, dark, time, space, you know, I think there's definitely some different concepts that would work well. But the other thing too is that in these creative conversations about whether or not it makes sense to add elements, we're very sensitive to the fact that this is targeted towards a kids game and if you start to add too much, it becomes a little bit of a situation where it's too much for them to comprehend and and it also adds uh, a combinatorial aspect to the game that could make it actually more challenging than kids would want or feel is fun as opposed to frustrating. So somewhere down the road, maybe we add new elements. It's certainly something that comes up quite a bit. But right now we don't have plans to for Swap Force. We're going to stick with our eight elements. And partly because in Swap Force, we're actually introducing eight new uh, sort of Swap Force types. We, I talked a little bit about in that demo where uh, one of the characters I was talking about, Blast Zone, has the rocket ability and we're gonna have a climbing ability so we actually are adding a new uh, classification for characters based on uh, a specific abilities associated with swap force but in terms of those core elements we think I have a really nice set it's a nice number there's eight total that work well based on the elemental zones we offer so we'll see how it turns out like I said we, we talk about it a lot and certainly ideas like time and space are really cool and then you know some of the other things that the team has come up with in the past so just one of those things that we always have on the table you know that we can revisit and so we'll see what happens all right so um, you know lastly this is somewhat off the subject but on the subject um, what do you feel about you know the next gen market. That's, uh, it seems like the next gen market is about to happen right now, and the future of Skyland is. I mean, what do you feel? You know, uh, as far as like this this craze is coming with the new Xbox and PlayStation making their possible announcements this year. Sure. Well, since we don't know exactly what's going on yet, they haven't made any announcements. We really don't have anything to comment on at this time, but certainly we're always looking at the franchise as... <laughs> certainly we're always looking at what's viable for the franchise in terms of platforms. This really is a transmedia experience. You know, we like being ubiquitous and, and giving every possible opportunity for kids to play the game. And with the new platforms, we're certainly just as excited as everyone else to hear what they're doing. Cool. No, nah, no, nah, I totally understand. I start to see those those red dots on your um <laughs> on your back yeah, from the yeah, going <laughs> like yeah. So after that one was Sony. <laughs> that was yeah, Sony. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Keep talking, buddy. <laughs>